Hello, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the new Verizon 5G home internet. We're going to set it up and talk about some of the most important best practices that I think everybody should know in order to get the best performance. In the next video, though, we're going to really put it to the test, all kinds of tests. So you might want to subscribe for that. You might remember that over two years ago, I actually reviewed the Verizon 5G home internet in that video. But a lot has changed since then, because back then they sent me that Cube 5G modem with that part number. And now they sent me this bigger and rectangular 5G modem with that part number. So does bigger mean better? We're gonna find out. Back then I was on the 5G home plan paying $50 with auto pay, but now I'm on the 5G home plus plan, which is supposed to be faster and I'm paying $70 with auto pay. The new modem is bigger compared to the older one. It has an LED status light, a 5G signal bar to show your connection strength, and a Wi-Fi status light. It also has two LAN ports and one USB-C port. Now, the previous one was dual band Wi-Fi 6, but this one, although it is also labeled Wi-Fi 6, seems to be Wi-Fi 6E, because it is tri-band with the third band being 6 GHz. So it should be Wi-Fi 6E, not Wi-Fi 6. Now first we're gonna do the basic setup just to make sure internet is up and running. First plug in the power adapter and connect the modem to a power source. The best spot for it is usually somewhere close to a window to get a strong 5G signal. The gateway's blinking white light means it is starting up. Once the gateway shows a solid white light, the setup is complete. If it shows solid red, it means there is no 5G signal and you should try a different location. As you can see, we have a solid white LED light, two 5G bars out of three, and the Wi-Fi LED is solid white, indicating the Wi-Fi is ready and being broadcast. The default Wi-Fi name and password are written on the bottom of the gateway. You can use these to connect your devices to the Wi-Fi and test the internet connection. Now, this was the very basic setup. Many people stop here and keep using the Wi-Fi as is. But there are some advanced features you can use to improve your network. For example, you can change the Wi-Fi name and password to something you like instead of using the default name. You can create guest Wi-Fi for your guests, IoT Wi-Fi for smart home devices, change the security and firewall settings to make your network more secure, use port forwarding, and many more. So now let's take a look at some of them. And make some changes. For the advanced setup, I need to log into the web interface of the gateway or use the My Verizon app. I prefer using a computer, so I'll demonstrate that. On a computer, connect it wirelessly or wired to the gateway, open a browser and type in the gateway's IP address, which is 192.168.1.1. The login password is also on the bottom of the gateway. Once logged in, first let's change the default Wi-Fi name and password. Change the view from basic to advanced. Then go to the primary network under Wi-Fi where you can change the Wi-Fi name and password. The 6 GHz band is disabled by default so I'm gonna enable it. Currently all three bands share the same name and password. This means when you try to connect a device, you will see only one Wi-Fi name, even though there are actually three bands. After you connect, the device will decide which frequency band to connect to. While this is good in theory, some devices might have some issues. 
so you can disable this feature and use different names and passwords for each band. I personally prefer doing this and have different Wi-Fi names and passwords for each band. This fits my network design better because I use the 2.4 GHz band for smart devices only, the 5 GHz band for most other devices, and the 6 GHz band for devices sensitive to network quality. You can also create a guest Wi-Fi for your guests, which can only be 2.4 GHz, or a Wi-Fi for IoT or smart home devices, also only 2.4 GHz. This is great for security as it isolates IoT devices. In the radio management section, you can change the channel of each band or let the gateway choose them automatically. There is also a channel analysis section showing channel utilization in your area, helping you decide which channel to choose. In case you need more information about this, definitely check out that video where I talk about it in more detail. Now let's talk about some best practices to ensure you're getting the best performance from your 5G home internet. A 5G modem usually gets the best signal when it is close to a window, while a Wi-Fi router performs best when placed in the center of the house. The challenge with this gateway is that it is both a 5G modem and a Wi-Fi router, so you have to compromise. Either better 5G connection near a window or better Wi-Fi coverage in the center. This could be a major issue when installing the Verizon 5G gateway. One solution is to disable the Wi-Fi router function on the gateway, use it only as a 5G modem, and connect your own Wi-Fi router. This way you can place the 5G modem near a window and the Wi-Fi router in the center. Separate Wi-Fi routers usually have more advanced features, so you can benefit from that too. Now, you cannot just connect your router to the 5G modem because this creates double NAT issues as you will have two routers in your network which should be avoided. You need to enable IP pass-through mode on the gateway. This disables the Wi-Fi router function and turns the gateway into a modem only, preventing double NAT issues. In the new gateway, enabling IP pass-through is buried in the menus. First, go to the advanced menu, then network settings, network connections, network home office, settings, and finally enable IP pass-through. As soon as you do this, the Verizon gateway will stop broadcasting Wi-Fi, the LAN 1 port stops providing an internet connection, and you can connect the WAN or internet port of your router to LAN number 2 of the Verizon gateway. Then you can set up your Wi-Fi router to broadcast the Wi-Fi networks. Alright, that's it for this video. So far, I like that the new 5G gateway is actually tri-band Wi-Fi 6E and has a 6 GHz band, which can come in really handy. Unfortunately though, it is not very practical that I use it as a 5G modem and a Wi-Fi router together. Luckily, I can still enable the IP pass-through mode and use it only as a 5G modem and connect my own Wi-Fi router. In the next video, we're gonna do some interesting tests like speed test, latency, jitter to see if this setup is good for everyday use or maybe even for gaming. But until then, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.